Welcome back to Fish on Luke. We're not fishing today once again, but it has been one year since I have owned this 2017 Gator Tough 20cc J tunnel hull outboard jet boat. It has been an awesome boat. And today we're gonna go over the specs of this boat. We're gonna go over the things I love about the boat, things I don't really like about the boat, and we're gonna get inside and talk about the storage. We're gonna talk about everything involved in this boat, and then we're gonna take it out on the water and do some river testing for you guys to see how shallow this boat can go and some really cool things you maybe didn't know about these outboard jet boats. All right, let's start off this one year review with the specs of this boat. It is 20 foot, two inches long, um, 24.6 feet to the back of the motor. So the whole package is 24.6 feet. It does have a 97 inch beam, which gives you a lot of beam on the back of the boat and gives you a lot of space for fishing. Um, it has a 27 inch sides on it. It also has a 73.5 inch floor. So that floor is super, super wide. We can actually fit three fold out chairs next to each other in the back of the boat for fishing. It does have 0 0.100 gauge aluminum hull. It's not super thick, but the, the benefit of that is it keeps the boat really, really light, which I do love about this boat. So this boat does have an 1,850 pound weight capacity or eight people, whichever one comes first. And it has a very large 26 gallon fuel tank mounted underneath the last compartment in the back of the boat here. Easy fill right here, right in the back corner. And the best part about this boat when filling it up with gas, it does not burp and keep pumping gas out when you're trying to fill it. I can fill it all the way to the top without any problems. And what's powering this G3, this 20 foot boat, is a 150-105 Yamaha four stroke outboard. It has a lower jet unit on it. And, and I did, I don't know if I mentioned, but it does have a tunnel hull on this boat. So the bottom of the jet is actually up into the bottom of the boat and the tunnel part has a little ridge and the water flows up into the ridge under the boat and the jet can still suck up water. So that's a big benefit of having a jet boat with a tunnel hull is your jet's not below the bottom of your boat. So when you're on plane, your boat is the bottom of the boat and not your engine. One thing you can also see is this boat does have a jet doctor. It is an addition that does not come from the factory but this plate here will get your boat up on plane faster and keep your butt end out of the water when you're on plane. Um, it has been tested with my buddy's boat. He has a three year newer 20 CCJ than me and I can get up on plane relatively faster than he can. Um, and even my top speed didn't dwindle. Like some people said the top speed might drop when you put a jet doctor on, but it doesn't. Um, I still get a good top speed of around 38 miles an hour with two people in this boat, which I think is really, really good. And then having that 26 gallon fuel tank is a big benefit. And you get a big jump going from the 18 foot boat CCJ to the 20, you get a lot more fuel to put in your boat. And it can give you longer distances if you wanna get somewhere. Now let's hop on in the boat and uh, let's talk about storage. Let's talk about everything else you guys wanna see with this 20 CCJ. All right, now that we're in the boat, let's talk a little bit about storage. Let's talk a little bit about seating. So first things first, what's really cool about this boat, each side on the back has a jump seat. And not only does it have a jump seat, but when you take off the straps and lift the jump seat, super, super sturdy, really comfy. Don't really use this when we're fishing, but when traveling down the river with a few people in the boat, um, it is really nice to have these. Um, you get a softer ride in the back of the boat as well. What's really cool about these seats is they open up and there is storage in here, which is really cool. I actually keep a fully greased hub back here at all times. This is the hub spot. Underneath the other seat, I keep my grease for the jet. Every time I get done fishing, I, uh, I put the grease pump on the jet and I pump it out until it comes out, extrudes the water. That can be on another video. So you guys saw the rear storage. Each jump seat has storage. Just a little compartment, really good for trays. Also good for obviously my, my greased hub. But there's also storage on each side of the center console. And here is this side, I keep a sling for big fish. I keep an umbrella, I keep a buoy, I keep ropes, I keep measuring boards, I keep tape measures, scales, um, everything. In, that, in terms of that, I keep on this side. It's actually a pretty good amount. This storage actually goes through the front. So there is a front compartment on top here where I keep my life jackets, but it also all connects. So all these storages, right and left side and the front, are all one storage. Um, the other side, 
is rod lockers. And, and the reason I don't really like that side for the rod lockers is you cannot really fit very long rods and they're seven foot max and they're still bending a little bit. And that's one thing different about the newer 20 CCJs is they actually move the console back to give you more room up front. And I feel my front room is actually really good, but they moved it back, which moves this back, which gives you more room for rods in your rod storage. So that is one thing this boat is lacking is I cannot fit any of my seven foot six or eight foot rods in the rod storage of this boat. And another thing, uh, the front storage, which I did talk about, this is where I keep all of my life jackets and my throwable. It stores four, four life jackets really well with the throwable. Um, but that is it for storage. It's both sides of the center console, the little rear compartments in the back, and then you have this front center one. Not a lot of storage, but when you do the kind of fishing I do, I kind of bring what I'm gonna use for that species. Otherwise, I don't have anything in here in terms of tackle, so it's not too bad. All right, now let's talk about the live well storage in this boat. There's ample room to keep pretty good sized fish and a good amount of fish alive in this boat. We'll start with the back live well. It is a 14 inch by 34 inch, 31 gallon live well. It has a divider that does come out. Um, the pumps, the switches for the pump are on the center console of the boat, which I will show you guys in a little bit. And then this, this live well is cool. It can hold a pretty big fish or multiple fish. And then we go right here, right under the driver's seat. This flips up, it's a 15 by 15 inch live well. And this is typically used for bait for me. So I usually keep my bait in here or late fall walleye when I don't want to run my big live well in the back. I'll just put everything under the seat, which makes it super, super easy. All right, we've gone over storage, live well, the dimensions, everything else pretty much you want to know about the boat. But we're still talking about the center console. Um, I actually love center console boats. It's awesome. Um, this has all the switches right here that you need. It has the interior lights. It does have one interior light, which is mounted right below the throttle. It has the aft aerator, the forward aerator, the bilge, the nav lights, and the master power. Um, the fuel, the fuel meter is behind my graph right here. And this boat um, is super simple. Um, it's not the deluxe version. They make a deluxe version, which has more gauges and all that. Super, super simple. And uh, that's why I like it. All right, we're gonna talk about the add-ons to this boat that things I've put on to make the boat better, in my opinion. First thing you wanna do when you buy an outboard jet boat, buy the wheel for your steering wheel. The response time on outboard jets is not ideal. It is not like an inboard jet. If you've ever driven an inboard jet, it is not like that. It's a lot slower response time and it does take some getting used to, especially at lower speeds when trailering. I've pretty much got it down now. I've been fishing a lot with this boat over the last year and that is the best thing I've added to this boat in terms of drivability. Get a knob, get a wheel knob, and you'll be a lot happier when driving the boat. Second thing, Garmin 93 SV, not my favorite graph. I'm not gonna lie, I'm probably going back to Humminbird. This does not make the boat any better, but that is the graph on this boat. It does have side image and I can build maps on it, which I do like. Next, Driftmaster rod holders. I have 12 of them on my boat. You're probably thinking, this kid lives in Minnesota and he's got 12 rod holders. Well, it's not the thing that you use them all at once. Is there's always a time when I use them and Tara can attest to this that when she's like, when we're busy back here and me and another guy or me and someone else are in the back of the boat fishing, she can sit up front or I can sit up front or anyone can sit up front and use those front rod holders. So we got 12 drift masters in some states, we can almost fill these up. So necessary, maybe not, but a great addition to the boat. Another addition to the boat, Tara sent me a video on TikTok right here. This boat does not come with cup holders and this right here grabs onto my grab bar and it is a cup holder. I will leave a link for this in the description. Super cool. Bottoms come out and it turns into a rod holder. I mean, I'm not gonna put my catfish rod in there, but when it's on there, she's sturdy, sits right on the center console of the boat. I love that clip on rod holder. It's been awesome. So thank you, Tara, for that. Next up, Minn Kota Tarova. Um, it has spot lock. I can link it, but I don't have a hummingbird on this mat, on this boat. So it's just a Minn Kota Trova that I use for spot locking. It is a short shaft, 80 pound thrust, which I think is just fine. If I'm not in super heavy current, if I'm maybe bumping or doing something for catfish in really heavy current, um, I'd maybe want to up it uh, 
a size above the 80. But lake fishing, slow current, the short shaft 80 pound thrust Minn Kota is perfect for this boat in my opinion. All right, next thing I added to the boat, which I actually love is this cutting board. I actually had a friend make this, custom make it, and I actually mounted it on with a ram mount. Super simple, I can take it off, put it on, it's just on there if I want it, if I'm cutting bait. Also, I did put a bimini on this boat, which is not on here right now. Um, the mounts are right here on each side, and the bimini just lays in the back. It doesn't really get in the way of fishing, but it was wet from the other day, and I wanted to dry it out, so I did take it off the boat. And uh, last but not least for add-ons, we got two more things. Anchor pole right there. It's an eight-foot, two-piece anchor pole. I can show you how this works. It's a great thing. Anyone that's came in here and fished in my boat can attest they need an anchor pole and I could not agree more. It goes together, it mounts right back there, it sits perfectly. And what I do is I have brush clamps on each side of the front of the boat, which grab the brush. And when I, if I hang the brush clamp over the boat, I can actually stick this pole with a metal tip in to the mud or each corner of the boat, as you see here, has a loop with a rope on it. That loop is specifically for these poles. So if I just hang the loop over the edge of the boat, I can jam the pole in the mud, in the sand, wherever, to hold that part of the boat that I wanna keep still. It's perfect for running up on banks. I just jam my pole through the brush grippers and uh, she's staying there, she ain't moving. S lastly, add-ons for this boat are multi-bars. These things are amazing. They do not need to be here. One bolt and it is almost flush with the boat. So these things are completely adjustable. I can put them all the way down. This is as far back as they go. There's a safety stop so they can't get pulled back on a fish. They can come all the way forward and then this top turns, they turn sideways. So any angle I want to have, anywhere I want the rods to be, they will be there with the multi-bar and that has been an awesome, awesome investment for this boat. One more add-on that I think I should talk about is the headlights on this boat. Obviously, if you're not night fishing on rivers, probably not needed. But these are 225 watts each LED spotlights. These things are way brighter than my truck high beams, but that's what you need to be safe. And uh, this was a great addition. If you're into river fishing, this was a great one. All right, before we go take this boat for a spin, I wanna to talk to you guys the advantages and disadvantages that I've accumulated over the last year of using this boat. Number one, ease of fishability for an advantage. This boat is super, super easy to fish out of, either if you're river fishing or lake fishing. If I got someone on the back and I'm on the front, you never gotta worry about your rods hitting. Super, super spacious. This boat is really lightweight. Being it, is, it only is 0.1 gauge aluminum, which is a little thin, it is par with probably the rest of the boats out there that are similar to this, but it gives you that lightness. It gives you that up on plane fast. And being that there's no wood in this boat, no rivets, and it's all welded, makes it strong and lightweight. And not to mention this boat is super, super stable and really easy to load when you're done fishing. Um, it's just a great boat. Now, there are disadvantages to this boat and to outboard jet boats in general. Um, number one, sucking stuff up in your jet intake. It actually has not happened a lot in this boat. I fished an entire weekend um, in Wisconsin fishing for channel cats in a foot and a half to two feet of water. I think I maybe never got clogged or got clogged once. What happens is the floating stuff in the water is what gets you. It's not the weeds on the bottom, even in two feet of water. It's the floating weeds, um, gravel. You can clog your jet with gravel. And usually when I'm driving and I get clogged, if it does happen, I'll just turn the key off as I'm going. And usually the, the waves and the current will actually pull the stuff out of the jet. And if that doesn't work, all you do is, do is trim up and just pull the weeds out, have someone reach back or you can and get those weeds out. Um, another bad thing that I do not like about this boat, the paint on this boat, the paint quality is horrible. This does not have the grippy tape that G3 does have because it is kind of more of a base model, but this is not good paint. It scratches super, super easy. And when this is wet, when the front and rear decks are wet, it is very, very slippery. Um, I'm actually trying to get some grip tape put up there just so um, it's not so slippery, but I even took a Vikings player out fishing and he almost fell face first in my boat, jumping in um, and he is giant. And it would have not have been good because it was right before, uh, right before the preseason training. So not a good thing. Just be careful getting in and out of the boat if your feet are wet or the deck is wet. Um, another thing I don't like is the short rod storage. Not ideal and not what I wanted, but 
what do you do? You can't do anything about it. Surprisingly, this boat does rather well in waves. It fishes really well in waves. It fishes really well in white caps. Driving through them against the waves is a little bit rough. Not the best thing in the world, but it is doable. And this boat actually doesn't um, hydro out of the water very often, which I do appreciate. Um, it, you get the high revs like jet skis have. You get that same thing here with outboard jet boats, but this boat's been relatively well. Keeps it, it just, just seems to do a really good job even when it's wavy. When you're going with the waves on the lake, it's even better. Um, seating in this boat, not ideal. There's one driver's seat and two jump seats. I love it because I bring fold out chairs and we're relaxing in the boat, hanging out, just feet up on the back. But if you want seats, bases, they, this boat does not have it. This is not the boat for seat. The back down back here is super big and I love the space, so I'll take the space. Um, now that we've talked about the disadvantages of the boat, let's go show you some live advantages on the river. I'm gonna show you guys how shallow this boat can go. I'm gonna show you some little tricks this boat can do. And now uh, let's go for a little cruise. We'll see you out there. All right, so we're actually only in 1.4 feet of water, but I will show you guys how quick this boat gets up on plane with uh, just me and Tara in the boat. Uh, we have a medium load in here today. Um, we got a lot of our gear in here, so I'll show you guys an up on plane. Um, we're just gonna go from idle to uh, full plane and see where she does. I wanna make sure we're clear up front. Looks like we're clear and we're gonna send her right now. Already on plane, already on plane. That fast guys, that's a super big plus for this boat. Lightweight, 150 horsepower head, 105 with the jet. And another cool thing is we can go shallow. what makes this boat a sweet jet boat thanks for watching